We welcome all of you that have joined us tonight. It's good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. We welcome those that join us on live stream as well. <clears throat> We're in the book of Jude. This will be our second exposition of this uh, brief but pungent epistle. We'll be considering verse 2 tonight. Mm -hmm. Now Jude, like uh, Paul and Peter, and Luke and James, wrote to believers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's kind of a new concept itself. But right. Most epistles are written to churches or clusters of See, from the beginning, there were clusters. Clusters not meaning little. There, you may, there's some small clusters, but there were some big clusters. Church historians tell us that the church at Antioch had an active membership of 20,000 people who attended and that their amen could be heard for miles. That's a historic, they didn't have microphones. This is a historical fact. So people think that the early church is just house churches. They, <laughs> they are just mistaken, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. All through history, there's been this, believers have gravitated to, where, where they were able to do so, have gravitated to each other. Yeah. It's an amazing phenomenon now. It's been going on for 2,000 years. Yeah. Even though the, some people have done their best to neutralize it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still going on. Amen. So the apostles and the you know, other inspired writers would write to these clusters of believers, and some of them they were they weren't clustered; they were scattered, but they were the same kind of people. It's called strangers in, and they'd mentioned they'd be scattered all over, or Jewish people scattered, separated from one another. But how did these epistles get to these different people? Those scattered throughout in Peter names a bunch of cities. How did they get to all these regions? Well, see, the believers, unlike yeah. our day, yeah. the believers communicated with one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Churches communicated with one another. Yeah, that's, right. that's kind of a new phenomenon. That's one of the great blessings of some of these festivals, preaching festivals. So we'll see, there's a communication of, yes, of believers. Now, what, what kind of things did they write to the believers, these, these inspired people? We got the writing, so we don't have to, you know, speculate about it. Did they uh, challenge them to increase in number? Was that the, did anyone address that subject? Anybody? No. Jesus included? Did anybody? Prophets included? Did anybody address them with this sort of thing? But did he have commend them because they were big? Or maybe upbraid them because they were small? Did they? See, someone has to answer this. This is just not a rhetorical question. Did they? Because there's so much of this going on today. Did they urge them to pray for their country? They were scattered in different countries. They were not, but they were scattered in different countries. Did they, they, did they uh, tell them to make an a, a valiant effort to change society? Did they? Did they urge a lengthy, have lengthy discussions about a special ministry to the young people or to the senior people? See, this is going on. I'm challenging where it has come from. I'm saying it hasn't come from God. Amen. So nobody should pay attention to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. You notice now when we, we here, we have ministries for the women and the men and the young people, but they all, we all attend. Mm. These, are, these are extra meetings. Amen. Now, it's not that any of these things that I mentioned are like wrong of themselves. Don't get, uh, don't get me wrong here. Yeah. Unless you make them an emphasis, then they are wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Every valid ministry historically has been approached kind of with the same emphasis. I'll name some of them. The main person is God. The only access to God is through Christ. Lives are to be lived for Christ. Preparations are to be made for eternity. It is totally wrong. This is, this is the emphasis all through history. Sound doctor. It is totally wrong to live for anybody but the Lord. Yeah. Salvation in its fullness is the fundamental experience. Yeah. This has been the consistent thrust now of godly people. So anything that's not like this is not, it's not in keeping with what God is doing. Seeking the Lord, that's the primary vocation. All of the epistles underscore these, these values. I mean, everybody who's a Bible student, they, they know this, but it's just good to, yeah, good to say it. The strengthening of the faith and the hope are always at the heart and core of things. Yeah. Strength and faith, strength and hope. Mm -hmm. Get these divine qualities in the mind of the people. This is all done because of one's foundational love for God and Christ and even the Holy Spirit, love of the Spirit is called, and the people of God. See, these, this is pretty consistent all through, all through history. So as we should expect, this, these things are found in Jude too. They're in here. You can see how the Satan, he's just got to call some tributaries. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Whenever they found something that needed to be corrected, they corrected it. Because mm -hmm. they saw that people were heading in the wrong direction. Yeah, right. See, the inspired writers saw ahead of time where things were headed. Uh -huh. We do not have those kind of leaders today. And on any significant scale, understand? I'm talking about on a significant scale. They can't see where things are headed. They only deal with current temporary circumstances, but they don't see the result of this kind of emphasis, even though they're living with it. These men saw, like Jude, when people were heading the wrong direction, and they knew if this if this was not averted, mm -hmm. they would be damned. Yeah. That's what that's what it, that's what's at issue here. Yes, amen. It's not just so people would be nice mm -hmm. and and do things the best way. It wasn't that at all. Mm -hmm. They were concerned for the welfare of God's people, for the eternal welfare of God's people. That if it doesn't go well for God's people and God here, it's not going to then. Yeah, right. In eternity. And so the, Jude will follow this. He'll call for resources that come from heaven. He'll tell the people what they need. He'll shine the light on the things that are not acceptable. Yeah. He'll give names, like animal kind of names, to people that are damaging the saints of God. And he'll mention resources that will enable the people to, to please God. Now, verse 2. Mercy unto you. I say, mercy unto you. Yeah. And peace. And love. Be multiplied. Yes, See, that's not an I am fine, how are you introduction. You used to get the letters from the children. You say, I am fine, how are you? You know. But you got to grow up at some time. One of the daily irritants I encounter is the question from around the world, how are you? It really bothers me. But even too much, I got to tame it down. They really want you to tell them anything. Yeah. 
That's not where I live. I don't live a how are you. This isn't where I live. This is the last thing on my agenda. Not many days could I give a good, from their point of view, a good report, see? But Jude's not like that. He, he's, he starts out way up here. Mercy, mercy to you. Well, that's good. Mercy is one thing, but to you. That's, now that's something else. Some of the other versions say, may you have mercy. May God give you mercy with kindness. The message Bible is particularly poverty stricken here. Relax. Everything's going to be all right. That's right. That's the message Bible's translation of this verse. Mercy. Now, it's mercy. It's mentioned in the Gospels 21 times. Most of the time it's in the words of Jesus. Mercy, mercy. It's not mentioned one time in the book of Acts. That's just an interesting, you know, don't try to make too much out of that, but that's just a fact in the case. It's mentioned 38 times in the epistles and not, not at all in the Revelation. From Acts to Colossians, mercy is plural. It's mentioned five times, twice in reference to virtue found in believers, bowels of mercies. The word mercy is mentioned 217 times from Genesis through Zechariah. The Ark of the Covenant was covered with a mercy seat, which shows mercy trumps law. Yeah, <laughs> so, so there's a lot about mercy in the... Mm -hmm. But what is it? What, what is... Yeah. What is mercy? See, it's not so easy to, to define. It can't, it's definable. If you want a, a, a dictionary, a lexical definition, academic definition, it means uh, it's compassion, kindness, pity, benevolence, loving kindness, graciousness, compassion for the miserable. All right, that's the academic. It, that's kind of powerless. See, the conferment of mercy presumes the presence of a condition that's contrary to the divine nature. It's not necessarily sin. It can be like illness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the divine nature. It could be a deficiency in character. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what what mercy that pre presumes the presence of these things. Could be a backward your spiritual posture or even enslavement to sin. Mercy is related to grace, but it's not synonymous with yeah, grace. Right. Mercy acts since the condition, grace acts since the solution. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. To say it another way, mercy has to do with not punishing, see, mm -hmm. while grace has to do with conferring a benefit. Yeah. Amen. Mercy delivers judgment and condemnation from mercy. Mercy delivers from judgment and condemnation. Grace delivers forgiveness and reconciliation and divine strength. See, they're, diff right. they're related, but they're, they're different. Some apostolic writings refer to grace and mercy being given. Mm -hmm. The same verse mentions them. There's quite an expression found in Hebrews 4.16. Let's come therefore to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help uh -huh. in time of need. So mercy addresses the condition. Mm -hmm. Grace ministers help, recovery, and strength. So you really got to have both of them. Yeah, amen. Now let's, uh, allow me to take a moment here to accent the need for mercy. <clears throat> mercy is needed. It's a sort of a buffer between the divine nature and the fallen nature. Mercy is it's a buffer there. Stops the divine nature from consuming the people that are, have traits that are not like God at all. See, God's holy. That's right. It is fiery nature unless there's some tempering factor 
consumes the people he gets close to. So it's this for this reason we are told, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, walk before God as dear children. That will summon the mercy of God, which otherwise you'd be in trouble just for being a human. Keep yourself in the love of God. Make yourself as endearing to God as is possible. Because then the things about you that God can't stand, like flesh and things like this, his mercy will deal kindly with you there. Yes. Is there a sense in which this condition was allowed by God in order for him to express this mercy? Well, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Humanity itself, I'm saying. Yeah, I, I suspect there is, but we're on our own. And <laughs> yeah. As far as the fall itself, he, 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 That's he's, what I'm saying. he's dis displaying his mercy, but in order for him to do it, he did require yeah. someone that required it. Yeah, that's... That's how. I, that's what right, I think yeah, too. But yeah. I say we're on our own. Oh yes, I, I, and that. But yes, that's as to the extent a person can see that. Uh -huh. That that's that's right. That, that's not specifically revealed, you mean? Yes, this is you. It's a result of you. That God doesn't do anything without a cause. I mean, there's a there's a way. To, but a person has to be able to see that. Right. See the thread of reasoning. It's there, but mm -hmm. yeah, you have to be able to see it. This is important. Walk before God <laughs> as dear children, even though there's a, there's a thousand unwanted propensities in you. God's mercy will, will keep you from being consumed. But you've got to live in a condition that will appeal to His, his mercy. Amen. Just ponder the things now that are in you that God doesn't like. Not because he has a, <laughs> a strong opinion about it, but because it clashes with his, with his character. Things that are antithetical to God and have the potential of angering him. There's another law in your members that God can't stand. It's contrary to God. There's no way he can shake hands with it. But his mercy, see, endures it because it is like an unwanted condition. Think of the imaginations and thoughts that you have to throw down that were in your mind. See, if it wasn't for the mercy of God, you'd his mercy endures that situation. You have to contend with it. Do something about it. There's ungodliness and worldly lust that you have to reject. That come to you, they're in your mind, you have to reject it. Now, if you were under law, God's law, you'd be condemned because they were there. Whether you wanted them or not. Yes this mercy so he was able to to want it to be into the brethren too he was able to um, want mercy to be unto you because he's already experienced mercy himself so he knows what mercy is yeah well yeah I guess see he didn't he was tempted in all points that part I can see but it, Jude oh Jude yeah. oh yes absolutely Yes, absolutely. Yet the same with true with Paul. See, all these men they endured the same. You know what I'm what I'm emphasizing is. You're not condemned because you have them, but it's because of mercy. God's law was perfect. It was a holy. It was spiritual, and it condemned the presence, the very presence. That's the thing that convict, convicted Paul. You remember. Thou shalt not covet. The, there's not, not any of the fallen angels experience this mercy. No. No. 
Not at all. And it wasn't a deed that condemned Satan. It was an aspiration. It was an aspiration. He sought to exalt himself above the most high. See? The point I'm making is that God's nature, he's holy, and you do not ever want to get accustomed to thinking of God's being holy as to make, constrain him to excuse and pass over and gloss over. And it's his mercy. If it wasn't for his mercy, we would all be in a lot of trouble. The Lord that we are not considered. That's right. See, it's his nature to be merciful, too. Yes. You're expounding this and opening it up. You did under, you did start by looking at just like definitions and stuff like that and to show it just fell short. But as we're looking into this, we're seeing that God's demonstrated all of His traits. That's right. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no point, we've not like left to look up like what words mean. I mean he's shown us what mercy is. That's he's right. Shown us His mercy. That's how we're able to understand this because He's demonstrated it. Mm -hmm. No matter how long you've been in Christ. Or how much you've seen of God and known of the Lord and tasted of his grace, as long as you are in this world, you've got to have mercy. Amen. We may be tolerant of one another because we're mutually weak and this sort of thing. This is not the case with God. He has this nature that consumes whatever is antithetical to him. But he also has mercy, which allows him to deal with us without consuming us. Mercy. You won't go tomorrow. You will not go long tomorrow till you'll have reason to thank God he's merciful. Amen. There's imagination to be cast on. There's ungodliness and worldly lust to be rejected. There's a very real condition caused, called weak in the faith. It's a very real condition. <laughs> but he, if it wasn't for God's mercy, he would not be tolerated. Now, here's another thing. Uh, mercy is experienced by divine discretion. God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I'll have compassion on whom I will have compassion. There are some people he will not overlook it, right. a la Pharaoh. Uh -huh. That's right. Right? There's an example, Pharaoh. Saul of Tarsus said, who's Jesus? But he got mercy. Pharaoh said, who's God? He didn't get mercy. Whom, I, whom we will, he has mercy. There's, there's not a time when the mercy of God like kicks in automatically, so to speak, a sort of spiritual thermostat, so that when it gets to a certain point, the mercy just takes over. Mercy is dispensed with holy discretion. It may be to a blinded Samson chained up to the temp pillars of an idolatrous temple. Yes. Yeah, I was considering this as you were talking earlier. Uh, while we look at a certain aspect of God uh, as we are at mercy and a little bit of grace here, uh, as, you know, just focusing on that, there's a sense in which it's integrated with other aspects of God. Mm -hmm. In order for God to show mercy, he first has to discern who and what is worthy of the mercy. Because he's not going to dispense mercy where it's not really warranted. And it's going to be according to wisdom, because the mercy is not, the whole point of mercy is not just to uh, gloss over something that God hates, but rather... It's going to work to the ultimate good of the one that yes. receives mercy, yeah, and it's going to achieve 
the purpose of God in bestowing the mercy. So it's according to wisdom and according to knowledge and according to discernment mm -hmm. as well as his kindness Amen. and his mm -hmm. grace. See, there's at least mm -hmm. two people in Scripture that specifically ask for mercy. One is a woman from Canaan, the other is Bartimaeus. They have mercy on me. And they got it. He willed to have. In fact, I would go so far as to say that any person who conscientiously seeks this mercy will obtain it. That we might obtain uh, we might obtain uh -huh. mercy, right. find grace to help. Mm -hmm. See those two. In, the, in other words, to be helped, you've got to be in. God has to be mm -hmm. close to you. Mm -hmm. Mercy enables that mm -hmm. because because uh, he's made provision for a person of a tender heart and a contrite spirit mm -hmm. to pass over things that he would would not pass over otherwise. Jesus will to have mercy on both those people I just mentioned. Now he says mercy be multiplied or be in abundance or increased. The recovery that the people to whom Jude writes required were going to call for a lot of mercy. Because things were happening there that were calling for judgment and chastening and punishment and because they were contrary to the nature of God. But Jude knows God. He knows that that's not, that's not the only aspect of God. There's this merciful mm -hmm. aspect of God that keeps the flames from mm -hmm. <laughs> coming out, so to speak. Yeah. And this mercy toward us is possible now because of Jesus. Yeah. It's Jesus' good pleasure in God's sight that allows this mercy to Amen. serve. So let's say, for instance, let's say that some among us have went backward. Or maybe they did something they knew they shouldn't do, but they did it. There you are. There's forgiveness with him that he may be feared, but you've got to get close. Yes. Mercy allows you to get close. Amen. Amen. See? <laughs> It's so mercy, mercy to you, mercy to you, and peace, peace be unto you. Now, remember, we're being exposed to benefits that will give the saints an advantage in their situation. These are just aren't things that come to you, and it's just kind of like that. It's there's results produced, benefits brought by these conditions. You may be recovered from a fallen condition. Or it may be the need to advance. You're going to have to have mercy for both those, both those situations. I will tell you that there's a religious spirit in our time that treats these things as fundamentally not essential or necessary. There's a lot of preaching. I get the distinct impression that the people, if they believe what's being said, will think there's no need for mercy. Grace will just cover all our sins. Grace will do it. But you got to have this mercy. you got to obtain mercy before you can find grace. I mean, the scriptures say this. Obtain mercy, then find grace to help in a time of need. Peace unto you. Peace unto, peace to you or unto you. Other versions say to you or be yours or may you have or on you or may God give you. But the idea is coming from someplace else to you. This is not something you do. It's something God does. Peace unto you. It's an experience that's helped along by some other kindred spirit on earth that's laboring together with God. So... Here's Jude, he's laboring together with God. He knows what God intends to do, so he's laboring to bring get the peace 
down. He's uh, praying on earth, peace unto them. Give him peace. And then the Holy Spirit, he's producing peace because that's one of his fruit. That's some of his fruit. So he's producing it. So in this case, Jude sought peace for those to whom he wrote. God would send it, and the Spirit would apply it. Amen. Why? Because they're going to need this yeah. to recover. Amen. <laughs> when godly virtues or graces become idle or unproductive... That individual cannot will his way out of that situation. He can't work his way out of that situation. See, you can lose peace. I don't think there's anybody here that at some time has not lost peace. You can't just will it back or work it back. Can't do it. Some people are so dull they don't realize they lost. They don't have peace. There must be an involvement of someone else in their recovery. Yeah. This case is Jude. Mm -hmm. In heaven it's Christ, the Holy Spirit. They enter in, see, because this is not just a simplistic thing for you to get peace after you've lost it. Yeah. That's why there need to be godly ministers on earth. And God gives ministers to everyone who believes. There's somebody, yeah. somebody on earth knows you well enough to detect when you're drifting mm -hmm. and will step up in the gap yeah, amen. and plead for you. And all of us have probably survived things. We don't have any idea how many people, mm -hmm. other kindred brethren, were involved in the recovery, yeah, right. not to mention Christ and the Holy Spirit. But see, this is how the kingdom works. Mm -hmm. God's not going to let people just, well, there they, they, they chose their the way. They chose that way, recreant way, so... I'm just going to have done with him. That's it. See, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. He's got holy angels are ministering. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they have ways of directing people to the right environment and manipulate people's course so they can get in the right place for one of these little co-laborers to <laughs> join in. Here's Apollos. Mm -hmm. He only knew the baptism of John. This was an intolerable situation in heaven because the God had revealed his son through the gospel. Yeah. So he, he, Spirit directs him over here to Aquila and Priscilla. They see this deficiency. They enter in, and the situation is corrected. But if you're a spiritual hermit, see, you forfeit all of this. Yeah. <laughs> huh? So you live out in the woods all by yourself, and you, you think you have peace, but you don't have anyone working for you either. You don't have a kindred spirit either, see? So there's a there's a reason why we're put in a body. Yeah. Foreshadowing this uh, peace be unto you, foreshadowing what's involved, Jesus said to his disciples, peace I leave. See, I'm going to go, but I'm going to leave this peace. I'm going to leave this peace. Or to put it another way, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give I unto you. Don't let your heart, I'm going to define peace for us. Don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You can probably easily remember the last time your heart was troubled or you were afraid. You need peace. Yeah, amen. Why? Because in that state, God just doesn't work in that, for yeah. good in that state. The waters have to be calm. As long as that storm's raging on the Sea of Galilee, you are in danger. Mm -hmm. That storm's got to be quelled before any really productive work can be done. Yeah. Peace does this. Amen. This is dispensed from the reservoir of peace that was made when Jesus was on the cross. He made yes. peace. Amen. And it's like a gigantic reservoir. When peace is, comes to you, it comes out of that peace that Jesus made on the cross mm -hmm. he made he made peace between enemies yes. yeah. made peace I like that yeah. phrase see nothing, nothing more can be done for God to be satisfied about this thing of sin yeah. mm -hmm. Amen. 
There's no, no further work needs to be done. So Jesus isn't going to do one other thing to make God more satisfied than he is right now. He saw the travail of Christ's soul and was satisfied. That's it. You can't satisfy God any more than he is in Jesus. But you've got to be close to Jesus to benefit from that satisfaction. And that's what the people that Jews writing to, that was the danger they were in. They had allowed people in their assemblies to have influence that were pulling them away from Jesus which means you're also leaving everything Jesus gives. Amen. Yeah. You get away from Jesus, you can't have what he gives. Because yeah. uh -huh. he's going to hand it to you, he's not going to throw it to you. Yeah. going to hand it to you. Amen. The experience and benefit of that peace must be appropriated by faith. Mm -hmm. And he's going to bring up this faith in the next next verse even then you this piece you you have to let it work in you you got to let it work in you let the peace of god rule in your hearts to the which you've been called and be ye thankful let it see well how do you let it by saying okay go ahead peace it's by not getting into situations that the peace of god can't survive in is by cleansing yourself of all filthiness of flesh and spirit. Is by making straight paths for your feet. Is by purging out the old leaven, crucifying the flesh, denying ungodliness. If you don't do that, the peace of God won't keep your heart and mind because it's, it's yes, go ahead, Bubsy. Peace is the fruit of the spirit. So if you grieve or quench it, that's right. One of these things you just mentioned. That's mm -hmm. right. Then you've forfeited that. You to forfeit some degree. the peace. Mm -hmm. Not be not. It's not like a matter of law. Okay, I'm taking take it away because you did that. It's because the peace doesn't function. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, amen. In that kind of environment, mm -hmm. it's like you suffocated peace. Mm -hmm. Peace is like Noah's dove. He couldn't find a place to set his feet. He went yeah. back. But back to Noah. That's the way peace is. Peace comes from Jesus. But if you don't have a, a place for it to rest in you, it just goes back to him. And you, uh, you miss out on it. See, these deeds of the flesh, they're like a disruption to peace. To fulfill lust of the flesh, you have to forget God, forget Jesus, forget the day of judgment, you can't yield to it if you don't do this. And when you do, peace takes the wings of a dove and flies away. And you will feel uncomfortable in the presence of God. A spiritual life cannot be lived out in an environment of unrest. I have uh, been in churches that were like in a constant state of turmoil all the time turmoil somebody did this somebody did that somebody said this somebody said that and the peace of God does not rest in that kind of environment a troublemaker has no place in the body of Christ if that person's making trouble all the time agitating all the time it's got to just start emphasizing God, emphasizing Christ, and the person will either shape up or leave. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. troublemakers can't stand the presence of God, because God is, mm -hmm. well, you know how it is. The objective must be for the people to be made more comfortable and joyous in the presence of the Lord, as opposed to, to Israel trembling at the foot of Mount Sinai. See, it, see the difference? They were in the presence of God. And they were, oh, don't, don't speak anymore. Yeah. We're, we're afraid. See? On the other hand, Peter says, evermore, you know, give us this yeah. bread. To whom shall we go? See, see the difference? Uh -huh. yeah. What was the difference? Peace. Mm -hmm. That's part of it at any rate. Peace. 
Then there's this, this multiplication of peace. Some of, versions, some of the versions say abundance or in full measure. See, peace can be a little ripple, bloop, or a tsunami wave. You can have peace for a moment, or you can have peace for an extended period. It can be like a cleansing wave. It pervade everything. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the Sea of Galilee is quite a picture of life, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. The two on the road to Emmaus, they had burning hearts. You remember when Jesus talked to them, their hearts burned. But after he left the table and things dawned on them, whoa. They had this, they had a multiplication of peace. Yeah. And the, they'd been up all night practically already. This is still the first day of the week. This is still on the Lord's Day. Yeah. And the night had come, and they walked back yeah, that's right. about seven or eight miles, walked back mm -hmm. to Jerusalem to report. what. That's what that, they had this peace. Mm -hmm. I imagine it was dangerous to travel at night, mm -hmm. perils of robbers and so forth. They didn't seem to think about that at all. They had this peace. It multiplied to them, increased. You know, it says of Jesus... And of, his, of the increase of his government and peace, yeah. there shall be no end. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Julia, we have to live very deliberately in day-to-day -day walking. Amen. Uh, because there will be things. We live in a fallen world and we have this nature of, fl of flesh with us. There will be things that present themselves to us that will seek to rob peace. Mm -hmm. right. We have to make a conscious choice what we're going to choose to follow after. Amen. Mm -hmm. The scriptures tell us to follow after the things that make for peace. Mm -hmm. Go back to this matter of mercy. Yeah. Uh -huh. At the time, at the temptation level, or the, when the agitation commences, seek mercy yeah. uh -huh. and obtain grace. Amen. That's right. But you can wait too long. Uh -huh. But I know this by experience. You, yeah. can, you can linger too long. And he's, and he's not there anymore, like the lover of Song of Solomon. Yeah, that's right, yeah. The woman was, uh -huh. had retired for the evening, and her lover came to the door, and he knocked, and no answer. He tried to rouse her from her sleep. He said, I, I, can't, I can't come. I put his hand to the, to the door, looking for the latch, you know. Finally, she got out of bed and fixed herself all up and went to the door, and he's gone. Hmm? No, that uh, vivid picture yeah. of a lot of people's experience. Yeah. It may have been during the nighttime hours. Sometime God awakened them. God is working with them. They said, well, wait, I'll, I'll deal with this tomorrow. When they finally got down to doing something about it, he wasn't there anymore. Peace was gone. Yeah. Or that we would help each other more in remaining sensitive to the involvements of God with his people. Yeah. They're, ex they're extensive and they're multiple, but you have to be alert. Amen. Have to be alert to them. So that if he joins you on the road, at least you know who it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, uh, yes, Brother Aaron. Peace can be kind of used as a, as a barometer uh, for our, for our our condi the condition of our soul because mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be either at peace because we're close to the Lord or we'll have a, a sense of peace because we're closer to the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this yes, amen. Pe mm -hmm. peace from God. So you can't have peace with God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so this, see, it draw, you try to God draws close to a person in the flesh and it, and it causes terror. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so when you're, you, you kind of judge yourself, weigh yourself in this matter that am I, am I at peace when the Lord's close or when he's not? Mm. Mm. Very good. And he says, and love be unto you. See, like all of God's gifts, love is not automatically dispensed. 
not on like a timer. It just sends out a, a puff of love ever, ever so often. That's, it's not like that at all. Jesus said to the Jews, and they were members of a nation that God loved, right? set his love on them. He said, ye have not the love of God in you. Uh, yeah. He's praying the love of God be unto you. Jesus said to them, you don't have the love of God in, in you. John said this of a one who kept God's word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. You, so you get love like in the raw mm -hmm. and is perfected or matured in you. It doesn't come to you but in a matured state. Uh, yes. right, if I may use it, it comes to like in a seed state. Uh -huh. The love of God is perfected in you. He also warned, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in mm -hmm. him. Yeah. He doesn't love God. Well, he said he did. Well, he does. He still doesn't love God. The love of God is not in him. Uh -huh. Again, John asked, Whoso hath this world good, world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Uh -huh. See? This is the love that's unto, yes. directed to the saints. Paul wrote the love of God, wrote of the love of God being with you all, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. And the love of God be with you all. Be with you all. See, that's Jude praying that. He's praying the same thing. Love be unto you. Paul's desire for the Thessalonians was stated this way. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. Sad. <laughs> now this is God's love for us. But when it gets in your heart, you return love That's right. to Him. This is not just a capacity to love God. Mm -hmm. It's not that. God really, really does love His people. Amen. And when, they, when that love enters into them, they really do love yes. Him and His people. Amen. Salvation is being administered within a working kingdom. Not a static kingdom, a working kingdom. Mm -hmm. Jesus is governing. The government's on his shoulders, and he's managing the kingdom of God, which involves sending mercy and peace and love, and love being sent back to God and to his people. He's administering this kingdom. It's a working kingdom. It's not a static kingdom. There is, in other words, there's nothing in the kingdom that is done spontaneously, impulsively, instinctively, involuntarily, or in an unmediated manner. Yeah. Nothing happens in the kingdom of God that God, Christ, and the Spirit is not in. Amen. Are not in. Not, right. See, peace from, mm -hmm. from God to mm -hmm. you. And it, we can hone up our, discipline ourselves in thinking in this manner. Assist one another in thinking. It came from God. It mm -hmm. came from God. What I need comes from God. Amen. I've, I've got to get close to God. I've, I've got to have an ear to hear mm -hmm. God. See, it all, it all works this way. And Jesus is administering all this. And if a person will stay close to Christ, these things will all happen. Because the government's on his shoulders. Every spiritual gift or aptitude can be traced back to God. If you trace its source back, it's back. Came from God. James said this, every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down. <laughs> cometh down from the Father of lights. So various spiritual traits and aptitudes are dispensed. Sometimes they're recalled. Samson's strength was recalled, right. and he didn't know it. Mm -hmm. ah, he, yeah. he didn't know it. Favor was recalled from Saul, King Saul. It was, re, it was recalled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Judas' apostleship, his bishop, was recalled and given to somebody else. See? You got to say why, why Judas reigned? 
mercy and peace with love from God unto you. See why he's saying that? And may it be multiplied unto you. Because their situation is not going to be corrected unless something from heaven gets down to them. Right. It's not going to be corrected by a set of rules uh -huh. or guiding them through a set of procedures. Mm -hmm. Give them a plan. Yeah. The answer is going to be they're going to have the supply, heavenly supply had been cut off, uh -huh. had been some way cut off. And he's trying to reestablish, so trying is not the right word. He's endeavoring to reestablish this connection but he's got to have the attention of the hearers. It's not going to be ministered to them in an un spiritually unconscious state. He's got to have their attention. That's what he's, that's what he's doing here. Retrogressing. That's right. Yeah. There has Amen. to be all of these things, all of these resources assist us in drawing near to God. That's right. Mm -hmm. no, you're absolutely correct. In the retrogression state, mm -hmm. all these things are forfeited. Mm -hmm. And the, as, as, as the further as the person ad, goes further down, mm -hmm. divine resources get less and less. Yeah, right. But there are people that think that the same love that drew you out mm -hmm. when you said, "Lord, here am I," mm -hmm. will draw you out when you're down there at the bottom of the pit. It'll only do it if you've got some mercy. God's got to extend mercy to you down in there before Jonah can cry out from the bottom salvations of the Lord. He had to have some mercy to do that or he just stayed down there in the bottom. I don't think this is understood largely. These recovery ministries are too shallow. They're, they're, uh, they're not good. Love and love toward you. Well, what is love? See, it's another thing. These, these things are not easy to define like men want to define things. Right. <laughs> they're, not, they're not easy, are they? Right. You give a try at it. You will not be satisfied yourself with how you finally study it all out and trace the origin of the words and all that. But you, it'll leave you kind of, yeah. there's got to be more. Sappy yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh -huh. This is holy. See, this, now this, if you look at it academically, at the best, that's a start. At the best, it's an affection or benevolence, goodwill, an attitude of appreciation resulting from a conscious evaluation and choice, a love that is shown or demonstrated. Ah, well, that. Now, placing all the academic definitions into a hopper and distilling it, boiling it down, love seeks the welfare of someone else. That's right. Amen. That's what it all boils, boils down to. Love seeks the welfare of someone else. And if you're talking about the welfare of God, we talk that we talk call that the glory of God. You would seek the glory of God. See. When God or Christ is loved, their glory is sought. It, of course, I love God. It's, I can't begin to tell you the times I've heard this, this phrase. He loved God with all his heart, but, but, oh, I've heard, I can't begin to number the times I've heard that. Explaining someone that was slithering on a, like a serpent on a ground of flesh. He loves God with all his heart. My, my son loves God with all his heart, but he just has his trouble with drink. No, he has his trouble with love. That's what the trouble is with. Now, this love is primarily the love God has for the saved. That's the love that's shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit that's given you. He takes God's love for you, which is the only, here in his love, not, not, that we love God. That, <laughs> that's not the definition. But that he loved us and, and gave his son to be the propitiation for our sin. The person grasping this love, which is described as knowing the love of Christ which passes knowledge. When a person takes hold of this, they will be filled with all the fullness of God. 
That's what it says in Ephesians 3, 19. You got a little bitty measure of love for God is because you have just got a little bitty measure of perception of God's love for you, and you're only going to get a little bit of measure of the fullness of God. Limits everything. Hereby, and love can be perceived. You can, you can yeah. see it. Mm -hmm. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Yes. There you are. So this isn't settled by word studies. Mm -hmm. Does God love us? Did he, did he love us in Christ? Mm -hmm. Yes, hereby perceive we the love of, of God because he laid down his life for us. That tells the story. When you think of the things that Jesus were involved in, Jesus laying down his life, let me name a few of them. He humbled himself. We're talking about the one who was God. He humbled himself. He became a servant. He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He divested, divested himself of all the prerogatives of deity, the rights and prerogatives of deity, and he had to face the devil as a man, not as God, or not even as an angel. He had to face the devil as a man. He was tempted. This is what it's involved in him coming down. He was tempted. He had the iniquities of the world laid upon him and felt the weight of them. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. He tasted death. Jesus knows what it's like to die more fully than any man knows. He was required to go into the region of the dead and stay there for three days. And he's required to wait for his bride. Yeah. That's what Jesus, that's what Je that was some things that were involved in Jesus humbling himself and coming down. Once this love is comprehended, the next statement will be fulfilled. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. <laughs> who, who could stand before God who didn't sacrifice for the brethren and face God and face Christ who sacrificed so much for us? Amen. The extent to which we're willing to lay down our lives for the brethren, what's that mean? We'll inconvenience ourselves for the brethren. We may not do it for the mayor or for the president or for the neighbor, but we'll do it for the brethren. Amen. Amen. Yeah, some things Paul wouldn't do for Nero. John the Baptist wouldn't do for Herod. If there's a need, they'll distribute to the saints. They'll do it. How about this touchy, touchy thing? What about if God has given your brethren something to give to the rest of the brethren and you decide, I don't need that. Come on now, lay down your life for the brethren. Lay it down. Yeah. Yeah. They'll do the same for you. This is this isn't like a few brethren lay to do this and the rest mm -hmm. go your own way. This is this is so. If he laid down his life for us, we ought. Yeah. Right. It's unacceptable not to do this. Amen. That's why if I can if I can get up to go to the bathroom, uh -huh. yeah. I'm going to make a valiant effort to get up to hear what my brethren have to say. Amen. That's the way I am. And it's paid big dividends because it's been I've experienced it coming the other way too. And people Amen. people were not feeling all that well and there they, they came anyway and uh -huh. laid on your life for the brethren. Say 
Well, Everybody that's ever stood up there and tried to present something yeah. really appreciates when somebody says amen. Oh, yes. Now, I don't know. I, I do. Yeah. I mean, because it, it can get you energized. And But see, I don't want to be the person that sits here and has a shut mouth and doesn't <laughs> encourage the speaker. Okay, now I know this is hard to say, but it needs to be said. We need to help one another in this oh, series. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know, even in the old covenant when they all of people say amen. Amen. God made him say amen. That's right. God made him say amen. When they read all the blessings, say amen after That's after right. not after they all been read. After each one, say amen. All the people said amen. Yeah. Read the curses. All the people said amen after each one. Amen. Such would seem to be a minimal involvement. <laughs> yeah. In the fellowship yeah. mm -hmm. of the truth. Minimal. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how do you describe it? Love multiplied. How do you, the love of God shed abroad? That's see, that's shed abroad right. equals multiplied. Think of your heart as a house with a lot of rooms. You got the family room, the job room, pleasure room, whatever. Let the love of God fill all the rooms. Let it fill all the rooms. Let all the rooms of your heart be occupied yeah. by the love of God. And the Holy Spirit, this isn't something you do. The Holy Spirit will do this. Yeah. If you will not quench the Spirit and you will not grieve the Spirit, the Spirit will push that love of God till it fills every cranny of your life. And every time you think about doing or saying something, you will immediately think about what God's going to think about it. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will do that for you. So Jude is writing, what Jude is going to tell the people to do is going to need a lot of the love of God. They're going to have to have a lot of mercy, but they can, see? Abundant mercy. They have to have a lot of peace, peace like a river. They're going to have to have a lot of love shed abroad in our heart. They'll have to see God's love more clearly to do what he's going to tell them to do. But then there's a lot of God's love to see. It's not like it's not like God's love is a little, little planet that's far away. It's it's really big. And no matter what you've seen of it, you have a keen sensitivity that there's a lot more to be seen. Amen. Yeah, amen. And I'm telling you that if this love of God is toward you and you you receive it. There is no way to prognosticate the effect mm. that will have on your life, right. Amen. on your home, mm -hmm. now, wherever you are. You will have an impact wherever you are. If it's not among seen hosts, it'll be among unseen hosts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every place you go, the powers of darkness will have a tendency to part. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If things are going on where you work or whatever, you just have to put this to the test. Now, I've done, I've done this myself. I put it to the test. If things are going too well, you've done the best you can to correct it. Nestle up in the bosom of Jesus. Please God, and you'll see things will begin to change. Amen. Amen. The environment will change because the devil won't have the power that he once had there. And that's it. But first, we got to address this, uh -huh. yes. our association with, with God through Christ. That, then once that's addressed, see, some people are trying to address the other first. Oh, any involvement with any personalities other than God is number two. Amen. The second commandment was love thy neighbors. That was the second commandment, yes. not the first, the second. You can't preach as though it's the first. It's yes. not the first. That's just have done with people saying, this is what the church is all about, about helping people. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. We're not against helping people, God forbid. But first, it's about man and God. You get that relationship right, then you'll have enough sense to do the other correctly. Yeah. Doesn't it say, when a man's ways please the Lord? Or does yeah. got to go first. Then he makes, the Lord makes his enemies to be at peace. Yeah. 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 
Makes them. He doesn't make them. Make, he doesn't make them. <laughs> well, there's a lot there. Yes, Brother Jason. Usually when you hear mercy, peace, and love preached, it's the people who aren't Christians. Mm. <laughs> Most most of the time, the church when, yeah. when they talk about these things, it's it's they talk about it in the context of offering it to someone who's outside, who's mm. not a believer, uh -huh. and 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 that does apply, mm -hmm. but, oh, yeah. but that's not what Jude's talking about here. He's, right. he's talking about four believers. Now, one implication of that is this is what keeps you. That's mm -hmm. good. This Amen. is what keeps you. If, if there was if there wasn't any mercy, peace, and love, mm -hmm. we we couldn't be kept. And I I know we we talk a lot about this issue of eternal security and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But but if, if if the Lord didn't keep us, if there wasn't mercy, peace, Amen. and love uh -huh. towards you in Christ, and if He didn't keep you, like would you be kept? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That that was what I partially addressed when I said nothing's automatic or like a thermostatic controls it isn't when a thing when things get to a certain level then the mercy of god kicks in it's that's not how it's personally dispensed at his discretion and i can tell you that there is not you will never find a person who act earnestly wants the mercy of god that will be denied that's right amen yeah you he tells you draw near let us come yeah. so we can obtain. That's right. Now, so we might obtain. So we can obtain. And then once you obtain mercy, you can find grace to help. The Holy Spirit is involved in the desire for mercy. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, Brother Judah. This love that we have for Christ involves taking what he gives to us and using it for his work. That's mm. good. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've, you've said that love seeks the welfare of the one who is loved mm -hmm. and his will becomes our will so the only thing that we can do that is right with the things that jesus gives us is to use it for his work amen mm -hmm. amen. amen more than mm -hmm. more people saw that i remember when i was uh, learning math i kept doing a plus sign instead of the multiplication mm -hmm. sign and when it, it finally got it, it's like this is a lot bigger <laughs> this is not just, you know, 50 plus 4. This is like 200 because <laughs> I'm multiplying it. That's and this right. is, as you grow, you, and, and it's like your side of the equation, the multiplier gets bigger and bigger That's right. to where you can have, you can grow to where you can experience more of God's love. Amen. You, the multiple, you never reach a level of experience where multiplication is not required and present. Amen. Yes, Sir Logan. I like this idea of, you mentioned how God being holy isn't for overlooking things. The fact it makes him seem more articulate in his yeah, requirements. Yes. And um, I was considering the Old Testament, how it showed us that he showed mercy to the Israelites when they followed all of his specifications. Mm -hmm. And that was when men was at a distance from God. Mm -hmm. So now that Christ has removed that barrier, we are to such a degree close to God, mm. how much more how much more should that be stressed mm. that we be appropriate for the Lord? Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah, I, just, I wanted to say as a follow-up that I just think it needs to be said that you, it is true, it is possible to fall away. It is possible mm -hmm. to become an apostate. Mm -hmm. It's also possible not. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's possible to be kept. Yes. Yes. God. Amen. Mm. Amen. Evermore give us this bread. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I never I still don't have not grown tired of hearing that. He, yeah. he is able Amen. to keep you from falling. That's right. Your job isn't keep yourself from falling your job is keep close to the one yeah. who keeps you from Amen. falling that's right. yeah that's the good this we, what do you believe we believe you do not have to fall away that's right. <laughs> amen that's right. it's strange go ahead Ada. this multiplication brother jude is speaking to body of believers so i have to think that uh, oh yeah this aspect of, you know, when the Lord causes peace to increase in your life, 
that that ministers peace to me. Yes, that ministers good. peace to yes, the whole good. body. That's right. So, so if we're all having peace yes, being ministered multiply. to us, when we get together, it's multiplied. <laughs> yes, it's peace good. ministered yeah. to you. It's directly yeah, that, ministered to me. And love and mercy likewise. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah. Amen. Mm. That's right. Wait, did I hear someone over here? Yeah. Well, yeah, I just have a thought of the, um, the Lord has a vested interest oh, in um, giving oh. salvation to man. He's not wanting to uh, condemn us, but rather to support us on this journey. Um, uh, through this life, and one of the things I was thinking about uh, was uh, the Lord is rewarder of those who seek Him diligently. Mm -hmm. One of His rewards is mercy, because He loves to give mercy. That's right. Amen. All right. We'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we. We are grateful for the many things that you provide for us. In particular, these we have mentioned tonight, mercy, peace, and love. We thank you, Father, for delivering these things to us by, through the Holy Spirit and by our faith. We pledge ourselves that whenever we face difficulties, we will come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Thank you in Jesus' name for providing this benefit. Amen.